Hi, everyone. So this is our statistical data mining final project on Instacart market basket analysis. And we'll just go through the agenda for this uh, project. So we'll start with the problem, what the problem is about. And then we'll go through the EDA part. And then Vanil will go through the model, how uh, we use XB, XGBoost here to model our data. So Vanil will uh, explain that to you. OK, so let's start with the problem. So Instacart is uh, a company. It's an organization that provides the same day grocery delivery service to its users. And it gathered a lot of data over time, uh, the data related to the transactions that the users made. And it gave away the data. I mean, it published the data to the Kegel community to see what kind of insights the users, I mean, the Kegel Keglers can bring out from the data. So of course, uh, they anonymize the data first. So, so one of the uh, application of this uh, analysis can be the suggestion of uh, items. When, when a user makes uh, adds a few items to the cart, the application can suggest what items he or she can buy. And yeah, so let's get into the data part. So the first of all, as I mentioned, the, the data has been anonymized by Instacart, which means that there's no personal information about the users provided in the data. And there are more than 3 million grocery orders that are present in this, and more than 200,000 Instacart users have been captured. And the, and the order number of orders for every user is between 4 to 100. So it's, it's a good data to analyze. And we also have the hour of the day when the order was placed, and the day of the week when the order was placed. And we also have the time between the orders, successive orders of the users, like uh, how long, how, how many days after the user is ordering the items, is making an order. So this is the relational uh, uh, chart of the data. So we have the products. Uh, table that shows that uh, maps the product ID to the product name, and it has an IL ID, which is uh, the product is placed in an IL, and the product of course belongs to a department, so which is mapped to each one of those tables there, and we have two tables over here, mainly which is the prior table, prior orders, and train orders. So the prior order has uh, the data which has been, which is, uh, which the users have placed order in the past and the train data contains the orders which have been which are, which are the latest order data of the users and then we have the orders table which is the main table which shows us the details of the orders which orders was uh, which order was placed at what time of the what time of the day which day of the week and so on so let's move on and see uh, what more the data tells us so we'll start with the eda exploratory data analysis so this is the overview of the data. So we have these many departments um, at a broader level. And inside each department, we can see there are different aisles. And this tree map over here shows us how many uh, products belong to uh, those aisles. So the, the larger the uh, rectangles over here, the, the more number of products uh, that belong to that uh, department. So we can see that fresh vegetables and fresh fruits uh, make up the bulk of the data here. I mean, most of the products that were sold by Instacart uh, contained these uh, elements. And similarly, we can see there are so many other departments and so many other products here. So moving on. So we, uh, from this data, from this analysis, we can see that most of the orders were placed between 8 AM and 6 AM. So these this is pretty much obvious that most of the users are active during these times. And this is the, so you can see a very um, obvious Gaussian curve here that shows how the orders were placed and what, uh, how many number of orders are distributed according to the time. And this data tells us the day of the week, which is, uh, which we can see and we can see that the most of the orders, majority of the orders were made close to the uh, weekends, basically. So towards the weekends, people are more active and they order more. 
So, and this data tells us uh, the approximate, I mean, how, how many days uh, gap are there between successive orders of the users. So, we just uh, aggregated the data for all the users and we saw that most of the users order on a weekly basis, either on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. So we can see the two uh, bars, the tallest two bars are of days 7 and days 30. And this is the, uh, this shows the position of the uh, product on the user's card. So uh, how many products are there in a, user, in a user's card on an average? So the number of uh, items in a user's card has been plotted. Um, as we can see, there are most, most of the users have uh, items between 5 to 10, like 5 to 10 orders on an average. Most of the users order 5 to 10 uh, products. And here we, we can see uh, the distribution between organic and non-organic items, products that were ordered. So we can clearly see that organic products are, uh, are more, I mean, have been uh, ordered more by the users, although the organic products uh, constitute only 30% of Instacart's inventory. So only 30% of items were uh, organic products, but still we can see that there are more uh, orders related to organic uh, rather than you know, uh, non-organic products. So this is the uh, kind of uh, products that, uh, that are ordered. So uh, the proportion of the orders that we see here are the milk and fa low fat milk. These are the products which are ordered more frequently. So we can see a very high proportion of, for them. And similarly, we can see the trend for bananas, uh, fruits, and other items uh, through this chart. So okay, so now that brings us to the model building, and now Vinil will take over and explain how we trained our model. And so talking about model building, uh, so our data has uh, 32 million observations. So which uh, which which is a challenge where we uh, had to use very huge computation power to uh, perform our analysis. So alternatively, we have used the department and the IELTS information of uh, of the orders placed by each customer to understand more about the patterns. So we have used principal components uh, to understand these particular uh, customers by more, um, by more uh, products from these particular aisles. So thereby, we have a specific set of uh, principal components which will constitute most information in our data. Then we use k-means clustering to understand the uh, cu customer behavior of different customer behaviors. Then we have used uh, XGBoost to understand the behavior of each and every uh, cohort. Thereby, in the end, we'll be able to give personalized uh, personalized suggestions to each customer group. So uh, after using uh, the principal components, we have uh, used the top five, which will constitute to the 86% of the uh, data variance. So here we can clearly see that we have uh, four different uh, four different cohorts which are created, uh, which are uh, distinguished by the color. So as uh, as seen, uh, this is the k-means clustering, which is done on all of these data, and we have uh, four different. Uh, cohort types. So in each cohort, uh, they have a specific characteristics which, which are present across. So to understand more about each cohort, we look further. And uh, so we can, this is, uh, this shows us for each cluster, uh, if we take the different uh, customers present in each cluster and then try to see from which aisles they buy more uh, products. So here we can see uh, fresh fruits, vegetables, and uh, packaged vegetable fruits. And most of the top 10 uh, aisles which the, a particular cluster uh, buys is same across all the different, all the four clusters which we have created. And uh, one more interesting thing uh, to notice is for the cluster three, we have baby food formula as the primary uh, aisle where most of the customers 
customer base of cluster 3 are uh, making purchases in so uh, because this information is uh, is something which we have already known from our eda we we want to go ahead and then uh, investigate more on how these clusters are behaving we have uh, we have seen the top 10 to 15 aisles uh, to understand more about how the patterns of these customers in different clusters are so here we can see a different set of uh, aisles information uh, where different customers are buying the products from. So th there are very minimalistic overlap, which tells us each cluster is different from the other, uh, other clusters. So uh, going ahead, we want to understand, uh, understand and predict each cluster in a different way. So we used XGBoost on each of these clusters to understand their patterns. So here uh, we have uh, we have plotted the feature importance plot for each of these clusters, and then we can see that uh, the first three, uh, which is uh, first three features which are in the cluster zero, are different from the other clusters, which clearly tells us that for a particular for a particular cluster, uh, the important features keep varying according to their attributes. So uh, the main question of why uh, uh, XGBoost is mainly used is because from comparing to the previous boosting methods like gradient boosting, we see that uh, for huge data sets, uh, it is 10 times faster than the normal boosting. And also, it, uh, that is because it implements uh, parallel processing. Also, uh, we see that it will handle missing values unlike the case of gradient boosting. And in case of gradient boosting, uh, if we notice, if we have a negative, uh, negative, uh, if you have a negative loss, we would end up at that particular node. But here in XGBoost, it splits to the maximum depth and then it prunes the uh, tree back to uh, to decrease this loss. Thereby, the overall error would decrease and it would give us better information about the model. So finally, to summarize everything, so how uh, the entire analysis is going to help Instacart is. So once uh, we have done with our clustering and then we have made it into different cohorts to understand each cohort behavior, we can give personalized suggestions to each user belonging to a particular cohort. So thereby, we can have specific rules uh, to find out if, uh, if a customer A belongs to cohort 0, then uh, he's most probably going to add ABC items to his cart. Second is inventory planning of the store. So if, if Instacart notices that most of their customer base is present in cluster 3, in that particular region, they would suggest the store manager or the uh, store employees to, uh, to increase their in inventory in that particular uh, aisle. And one more thing which uh, Instacart can uh, use this model for is, so if, if, uh, if a user is planning to buy some particular product in a in his preferred store, and then if it is not available, using their locations, they can try to see if in a nearby store the same product is available, and then they can hint the customer to uh, order this pro this product instead of the previous one where the stock is not available. Uh, as we noticed previously, uh, the cluster three was showing uh, more of the baby products, which uh, which were prevalent. So. If we see a new customer coming under this particular cohort, then we can clearly tell that most probably the next item or related items uh, to a baby, uh, the customer is going to buy. So giving, giving or suggesting uh, products which might come up un under the cluster 3 would, would be most helpful for uh, Instacart. As future steps, so uh, as of now, we have uh, not used uh, frequent item set mining algorithms like a priori or eclat or uh, fp growth which which creates different rules according to our uh, data sets so we can use these kind of algorithms to understand the data better and then give uh, user specific predictions than cohort specific predictions also we can use cnn and rnn uh, to get the predictions even even close to reality as possible due to uh, deep learning involved. Thank you. If you have any other questions, you can definitely mail us at uh, these two email IDs.